inside today's podcast, I have back with me Heather Creekmore. Heather is the author of Compared to Who, The Burden of Better, along with several workbooks on body image, and she's here today to discuss her new book, Aging Gratefully. Um, I'm currently reading Aging Gratefully, and I love it, and so I'm really excited to have her here with us today and to discuss some of it and gain even more life-giving insight. So, Heather, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thanks so much for having me, Vanessa. It's great to be with you. Yes, it's. I feel it's been such a long time since I've talked to you, but I was like, you just popped up in my feed and it was perfect timing. And I'm like, wow, I, I'm awesome. going to get that book. And then I loved it. Oh. So <laughs> Awesome. Oh, yes. I'm so humbled by that. Good. So one of the things, you know, I've highlighted so many quotes and prayers that you have in the book. Um, and it's been really freeing for me mm -hmm. to read. Like that's a big part of it. Um, cause like a lot of the things that you address, I have, you know, wrestled with, or, you know, I've addressed in my own life, but haven't really, uh, figured it out yet. Right. Like, I'm just kind of like, okay, how do I do that? So I've really been enjoying reading this cause it's been helpful. Good. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to start with was talking about the confidence in God, Okay. right? So in your book, you shared that you have confidence. You can have confidence when you sit in a circle of strangers, because with Jesus, you don't have to put hope into winning the admiration of others. That is huge. Oh my goodness. So I love that. Um, and I definitely attempt to practice this, mm. but sometimes I'm more successful than others. Um, how do you practice this? Mm. Yeah. Well, so like, you know, to kind of, I guess, back up a little bit, like that whole devotional day, that whole chapter, if you will, is really about this. I think it's a misconception I had. I don't know if you had this too, but I just always assumed that when I grew up, I would be more confident. Like right. someday I'd reach the age where it's like, okay, now I'm confident. But what seems to happen with aging is like, the older we, the, I don't know what the top of the like arc is, but it's like the older we get, it's like, oh, well now I can't be confident anymore because I'm old, I'm aging, I'm not relevant anymore. Right. And so really thinking about like the myth of, of chasing like, okay, someday I'm going to be old enough to feel good in my skin or feel confident in the world. And then aging comes and it's like, ha ha, jokes on you. Like, how do we, how do we address that? Like, how do we stop that in its tracks? And I, yeah. I think for me, it has been truly recognizing that there's not like this checklist of things about me personally that I can hold and check off every box and then suddenly boom, I'm confident. Like, that's just not how it works. Even though I think right. that's how we're told it works. Like, that's what we believe. Right. If I had this body and these clothes and this kind of family and this kind of life and this kind of job, like, oh, then I would hold my head up high. And it's like, but it just it never worked for me practically. Mm -mm. <laughs> it's like, there's no. always one thing or, or maybe I do get it a little bit more together, but then like something comes in and derails it. Right? right. Like injury or you lose the job that was so great or, oh, our relationship's kind of in a dark spot right now. That's not my thing. And, and so anything we put our confidence in, that's a created thing. <laughs> anything here on this earth that we put our confidence in has the ability to leave us high and dry, not feeling yeah. confident. And so I really think for me, the takeaway has been like, God is the only place I can put my confidence. That is yeah. the only thing that I can be confident in. So when I walk into a room of people, I cannot be confident that I'm dressed cute. I cannot be confident that I'm going to have all the right things to say. I cannot be confident, even if I'm speaking to women, that my mm -hmm. position is instead my posture has to be like, okay, you know what? Jesus work through me. Like what, what you have given me is all I have. Just help me love others well. And that's a different kind of posture towards confidence where I'm not looking at like, how can I be great and everyone think I'm great? It's how can I just bring more glory to my father and, and love everyone well, right. and not worry about my own greatness. Yeah. And I think, I think that's it. I mean, 
Because like all I, I know and I have known that there's no one that I can trust or put my confidence in except God. Like mm-hmm. I, I know that not just because I read it, but like just through life. Like I know it. However, what I've realized in this past year is that, um, and I don't know if maybe it faded a little bit and then it came back because I have so many new changes in my life, but like, I realize I still have a desire to be liked. Mm. Like I, I want people to like me. Yeah. <laughs> And and I and I can go even further and be like, okay, well, why? Why do I need them to like me? And it's like, when people like you, your days are more pleasant. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, and and it could be like, oh, well, when I'm this size, pe- my day will go better. Or mm-hmm. when I can wear those clothes, my day will go better. Or when my hair looks like that, or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, you could fill in the blank. Um, and then I, you know, kind of laugh at myself and I'm like, oh, well, I'm back to the beginning again. Like, Mm -hmm. cause my big revelation on that was you don't have to be perfect. You know, that's the name of this podcast Mm -hmm. and all that. And yet I'm still (laughs) sleeping. Yeah. Those same things, but they're different now, right? They're same, but they're different. Right. And, um, so I like the hard part for me is like what I've been doing when I go to work, you know, when I go like, like, this is the first time in a decade that I have a job that's where I'm working for someone else. And I show up to a job and I punch a clock. Like I haven't had that in like 10 years. And so I had this moment when I asked God, like, Oh, should I take this job? You know, like, I don't, I don't know. I am so used to not doing this. But it was like, yes. But this little warning, like, you're going to have to deal with that perfectionism again. Like it's going to, you're going to see it come up and it has, you know? Um, And so what I've been trying to do every single day, multiple times, as many times as I need a day is be like, God loves me right now yeah, as I am today, not because of how I perform, Mm -hmm. but because I'm his. Yep. Just like I love my children because mm-hmm. they're my children. Yeah. And so that that actually has been helping. But I think putting in practice what you said, making, you know, putting all your confidence in God. It's like we can understand the idea, but the practice of it, I don't mm-hmm. think just happens overnight. Right. Definitely not. And I mean, I. So I tell the story of I one of the first speaking events I did years ago, I really wanted to impress everyone. It was kind of a big group. And I was like, mm-hmm. this is my chance to just knock their socks off. And I failed miserably. It was awful. I was like tripping over words and losing my place. It was so bad. Mm-hmm. And I got in the car. And of course, like first thing was like, I just want to quit. Like, I'm not going to do this anymore because I was really embarrassed. <laughs> And then as the Lord and I kind of started talking about it, it was like, Heather, who were you there for? I was like, I was, you know, for you, God, totally for you. And it's like, (laughs) no, Heather, who were you there for? Well, for me, like I wanted them to be impressed by me. I wanted them to, to your point, like me Mm -hmm. and think well of me. Yeah. And after my kind of heart to heart with the Lord that day, um, you know, where he kind of showed me like, that's okay. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. Like, that's not going to be how we do ministry. Um, what began to change in mean, the very next speaking engagement I did after that, I started as I opened in prayer for the group, I started, my prayer was, Lord, let me love them well. And my mm-hmm. goal went from how can I impress people to how can I love them well? What does it mean right. to love them well? Right. And so taking that to the micro level, it is it is me walking into a room and Vanessa, like, I don't think any of those insecurities disappear, right? Yeah. Like, I don't, like the voices don't stop. Yeah, because, I wish well, they would, but yeah, they don't. me too. No. So the <laughs> voices come, you know, like, oh, you wore the wrong thing. Oh, they all think you look bad today. Like, oh, you are, you're a hot mess tonight, right? The voices all come. Mm-hmm. 
and instead of getting like sucked into it, like really the practice, the practical thing is being like, okay, shut up voices, <laughs> like shut up devil. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. no, I'm fine. I am here to love them. Well, how can mm -hmm. who, show me, show me who needs a friend to talk to show yep. me who's lonely, show me who's struggling, show me, show me how to love them well and take the focus off of me. And it's the strangest thing, right? Because I think culture kind of teaches you like, here's all the things that will make you confident. And it's all me focused. If I do this and make me like this and I do this. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think the real secret to confidence is taking your eyes off ourselves mm -hmm. and putting them on, on the Lord and, and really on how he can, how he can use us to help others. Yes. And so often I'm, I'm telling myself, turn your eyes on Jesus, turn your eyes on Jesus. Look, and you know what? And you know what? When you, when you say it and you do it in those moments, it all fades, it all yeah. lifts, but it comes back. <laughs> um, I, and that's the part, you know, and I get all messed up with that too. Like that's another part of the journey. It's like, oh, this again, I don't <laughs> done can i graduate from this <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> and i wanted to say this too hopefully it's okay but like i found it's more entangled like like even people me wanting people to like me it is entangled in like my faith convictions it really is and that's why i think it's been a problem for so long because somewhere I heard some message probably multiple times that like, unless they like you, they're not going to listen to anything you have to say. Yeah. So you can't share anything with them because they don't care about you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, and it made so much sense. Like, oh yeah, that does make sense. You, you might be likable. No one's going to want to listen to you if they don't even like you. Um, but Jesus reminded me very recently again of himself you know in the gospels um if people didn't like jesus and he was actually god in flesh he was the truth he was the light he was love you know i mean he still is but you know what i mean like during that time when he walked the earth and they still go, nah i don't like this guy nah i reject i don't right. want to kill this guy right then why should they like me you right. know what I mean? Right. And then there's also, because then it's like, well, then what's the point? Like, if no one's going to listen, if no one's going to change, what's the point? And I go there. And then it's like, wait, wait, there's more scripture that basically says some will listen, some will change. Mm -hmm. Right. Some won't. Right. Some will reject. And you're like, okay, that that's what I'm left with. That's it. <laughs> Maybe some little handful of people will listen right <laughs> and probably right. the majority will reject and well and you're not going to be everyone's cup of tea right like right and that and it's what i mean oh we went through a really hard time with our church years and years ago we planted a church and had some misunderstandings among some of the leadership and whoo it did not go well between me and some of those women and i was like but wait a second here like, I know the whole story. I'm the pastor's wife. Mm -hmm. I know what's right. Like, I'm telling the truth. I know people that aren't, you know, like I, I knew all the things mm -hmm. and yet some of them still didn't like me <laughs> and were oh still mad God. at me. Right. And that was a real, like, oh, that was a really hard season to go through. I love being like, yeah. this doesn't make any sense. And then, but to your point, right. Looking at Jesus, like, oh yeah, but he actually was the truth. <laughs> they hated yeah. him so and you know what and it's like even though those things comfort me i still don't like them yeah like i want people to not reject jesus you know what i mean like like i want all those people to go oh wait you know um that that is what i want and then i say well god you know my heart you know what i want you know that i want people to know the truth and walk in your ways because your ways are the best like you know i want that so I'm going to just take my little celebration in that, that, you know, my heart. Um, but yeah, it's, oh, it's, it's a, it's a struggle. And like you said, I don't think it's going to go away anytime soon. It's just, you have to take it. It's like that taking right. the thought captive. Right. right. And, and having this, like, I have to do it so often now, like so often now at work, uh, where I'm like, okay, God, help me just to work as unto you let your name be glorified and that's it 
Mm-hmm. I, I'm not going to worry about anything else. Um, and then thank you for loving me, you know, yep. even when I feel rejected. Yep. So yeah, I don't know. That's the best I got. But <laughs> I think that's pretty good. So let's talk about the realities that, you know, the reality that bodies change. I loved that so much mm-hmm. because I, it's like, so like, duh, but <laughs> it was, oh yeah, you're right. Uh, so I pulled a quote okay. from day eight in your book and it says, from the moment we're born, we never stop changing. That's natural, the way God made us. And yet we feel shame around it. And so reading that felt so freeing um, because I was like, yeah, I, I, I recognize that. You know, you, you feel bad about it. Mm-hmm. Like you've done something wrong. Um, <laughs> so why do you think we feel shame for getting older? And what do you do to, I don't know, bypass the shame? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, there's a whole world out there with something to sell us, right? Mm -hmm. And so unless we feel shame, we won't buy. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, and that's been, I mean, there's been really interesting books over the decades of like, just how the economy would literally crumble if women (laughs) keep buying all the products, all the diet stuff, mm-hmm. all the exercise stuff, all the cosmetic stuff, like literally it's billions of dollars in each of these industries. And so just, you know, not, not to make any of us cynical, but just to kind of take a step back and be like, okay, ask yourself, why do I feel the shame? Mm-hmm. Well, I feel the shame because the message is coming at me. Tell me I shouldn't age. I shouldn't look different. I should still be able to look like I did when I was, you know, whatever, 25, 30, you'd pick your age. But then thinking like, but wait, why are these messages telling me this? Like, what is their motive? Right. Well, they want to sell me something. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I think, I think that helps to some degree. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. to just to have a better understanding of that. But then also just like, it's then stepping into reality. Like, you know, like you said, like, I am going to change there is a limited amount of things I can control about my body, especially as I get older. These bodies are temporary vessels, Mm -hmm. right? And I mean, this is going to be a real upper. Your audience is going to just applaud and be super excited when I say this, but like (laughs) you have a 100% chance of dying someday. Mm -hmm. 100%. 100%. Like (laughs) like none of us like, woohoo, but none of us avoid it, right? Mm -hmm. And I think as we age, it gets scarier because it feels closer. Not that, right. not that like we're actively like, oh no, I don't want, but, but just that it's like, oh, there are things changing in my body that I can no longer just <laughs> throw a bandaid on and go forward. <laughs> right. And it's like, yeah. oh, it hurts in the morning when I wake up or, you know, uh-huh. like stretch. I read a funny meme and it was like, sleeping has now become like the most painful thing I do to my body oh, yeah. or something like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, mm-hmm. my shoulder. <laughs> oh, that's so- right, right. <laughs> like, from all your tennis games, no sleeping. Right. Yes, yeah. worse. Like, yeah. I mean, seriously, it, it's this past even month, it's just been outrageous. Where I'm like, I literally can't find a position to sleep in, uh-huh. and then I try to just like sleep flat, you know. Yep. It still won't help. It's still right. Won't help. right. Right. No, I get it. I get it. Yeah. So it's like, it's like, what does it look like? And I mean, that's really the title of the book is Aging Gratefully. What does it look like to just live in reality? Like, okay, this is kind of part of it, right? Like part of it is that, that our bodies are, are getting older, not getting younger. Right. And we can do things to pretend they're getting younger. Like we can use all the potions and get the injections and all those things to try to pretend. But at the end of the day, they're still getting yeah. So, so how do we in our hearts wrestle that? Mm. And I think instead of spending so much time wrestling our bodies and being mad at our bodies that they're getting older or not doing what we want them to do or looking how we want them to look anymore, I think this is really the opportunity we have to do what the Bible encourages us. And that's to really grow our inner beauty. Mm. Right. And I just almost wonder if, uh, you know, they say beauty is wasted on the young. Right. But I kind of wonder if it's like, OK, when you're younger, you have your outer beauty to like help you get by. <laughs> right. But right. as you age, right, 
we should have had 10, 20, 30, 40 years to cultivate some inner beauty. Okay, now it's time for that to shine through. Yeah. Like, what about giving that a chance instead of, and if I put all my energy at this age into trying to get my outsides to somehow look younger, I mean, that just ends up looking weird. Like, let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we were just talking to a friend today and like, I'm sorry, but we can't find one person who's had plastic surgery that looks better. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just odd. Like, yeah. just like, your, and then it's funny too, because like, I want people to just leave their faces alone mm-hmm. and like, just, just be your age or whatever. Like, I want that. But then there's like, oh, well, I have to look a certain way or else I don't have as much value. I mm-hmm. have lost value. And yeah. so it's crazy because I would say the last 365 days, um, I really was really coming, I don't know, hitting hard with this whole, the way I look thing and the mm-hmm. weight that just came out of nowhere and, you know, all, all that stuff. And and I knew like in all my prayers and all my journaling and, and reading scriptures, it was like, I know I'm not supposed to care mm-hmm. about the show. I mean, not, not care is in neglect, No, yeah, but yeah. I'm not supposed to be so wrapped up in this and trying to find, like you said, the potions, the pills. So it was like lesson by lesson, God was showing me that. And I, and I was listening going, okay, all right. But like, I wasn't there yet. Like I was like, just part of the puzzle. And then the end really is what you said. Our bodies change, period. They're supposed to. And so what you said about like, you know, letting your inner beauty shine at this age, as I was reflecting, you know, over the past several months, it, you know, some days I'd feel down, like, you know, you, you, you mentioned that in your book, you look in the mirror and you kind of get stuck there and you're like, oh, you know, and I was doing that. Like, I was just like, this is awful. This is so bad, <laughs> you know, and, um, and like, there's fear behind it. And, but anyway, so around that time I went, I went out on a little nature adventure. Cause I, do those like once a week. I'm obsessed. I I love going out to nature. I don't know if I should use the word obsessed, but it's like part of who it's part of who I am today. (laughs) 10 years ago, even, you know, and further back, no way. I never went outside. Heck no. I I did not go outside. Like now Mm -hmm. I'm like, I can't get enough. And I bird watch and it's insane. I've taken like 20 videos of birds today. (laughs) So my whole point of saying all that was I was out in the freezing cold. It was literally like, I don't know, 20 something degrees and snowing. And I was all bundled up and I was out in the snow and I was trying to get pictures. And I saw a bald eagle and I was like, yeah, it's amazing. And I just had this like, you know, like this me, this me. Hmm. And I tried to take a selfie of the moment and I was like, oh, gosh. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> like, like the same, like in the same uh, yeah. brain. I saw this is hilarious. You know, it's like I'm just mm-hmm. thinking how I really like this me. I like this me that walks mm-hmm. close with Jesus. That that takes time out of the busyness to just be in His creation. Like I like that about me. I like that I'm thoughtful. I like that I write. I like you know all these things. And then I looked at my face and I was like, oh mm-hmm. gosh. <laughs> oh the oh the irony. <laughs> I. And I, and I was trying, you know, I shared about it. I was like, you know, I don't, I don't love this picture. I I feel like, wow, a lot happened in four years. You know, I turned 40. I thought I still looked fabulous. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm 44 and I'm like, oh my gosh, like you can't even (laughs) recognize that 40 year old. And he was like, that's the same. Anyway, but I was talking about that, like that bittersweet or that like middle, like, Hey, you know what though? What does God care about more? Like what, what matters to him? And we know it's the heart. We know it's the inside. We know that from scripture. And, um, anyway, so I just thought it was like so funny and it was a good part of the journey and it's, it's going better. It's getting there and the book's helping. So (laughs) yay. I I'd love to discuss the idea of our ideals or expectations becoming 
idols in our lives. I thought that was fabulous. I was like, oh, that's good. So I thought that section was extremely powerful. Um, It was on like page 42, something like that. So like, talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Well, so that actually comes from my second book is when I kind of wrote more about that from The Burden of Better. Um, But really the concept is that like some of us say we don't compare ourselves to other people. We just compare ourselves to maybe the younger us or Mm -hmm. the me we want to be, Mm -hmm. right? It's not that like I'm looking at her thinking I should look more like her. It's just I have these standards for myself and I have to meet these standards that I have for myself. Self. Yep. And so what happens is these standards, they're really ideals, right? Because for most of us, we've never actually met them, mm-hmm. right? Like may- may- maybe we got close, but like there's, you know, there's no way we became that ideal mom we thought we were going to be or the ideal wife we thought we were going to be before we got married or the ideal, you know, employee or the ideal anything, right? It's just all these standards. And, and really what happens is these standards, these ideals, they kind of like glom together and have a message for us. And the message is, hey, things are really good over here in ideal land. Mm -hmm. You know, if you could just do this and look like this and be like this, then you would get to move out of your life of drudgery, sameness, and normalcy. And you would get to move to ideal land. And you know what happens in ideal land, Vanessa? Oh, everything is wonderful here. Everyone loves you and admires you and just thinks you're wonderful. You never get in a fight with anyone. I mean, your kids are like so just angels. Your husband like loves you in just like crazy dis- demonstrative ways. I mean, you'll have an awesome marriage, just <laughs> an awesome life. If you could just get your act together, mm-hmm. if you could just meet all these ideals. Mm-hmm. And, and so then what happens is we take all these ideals and we take what it promises us and we think, Ooh, that would be really nice. I would really like that. I would yeah. really like to look like that and be like that and have my life just be so magical like that. And then what happens really, Vanessa, is we're taking our deals and we're turning them into idols because really to put this in like God and Jesus language, really what we're saying is we think that there's things we could do to our own lives to make them more heavenly. We right. think that there's things we could do to ourselves that would give us a sort of salvation here on this earth mm-hmm. that is different than the kind of salvation God offers, right? Mm-hmm. But but that we could save ourselves from our own suffering and struggle if yeah. we just weighed the right amount and looked the right way yep. and behaved in the right way and had the right kind of personality and the right kind of clothes and the right kind of home and the right kind of family. And oh, wow, wouldn't life be wonderful? The challenge with that is that magazine covers dispel that myth. Right. Because these women that we see on magazine covers, they might look like we'd like to look right. And maybe even we know some about their personality from following them on social media or seeing them on, you know, television interviews or whatever. But if you read the headlines around them, normally it says things like, you know, like what happened when he left her or, you know, why she battled depression or like you realize when you dig further into the story that having the look and having the life doesn't actually s- just protect anyone from right. suffering or struggle. But right. those ideals, they lie to us. They tell yeah. us it will. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think it's so powerful because I know that I have done that for mm-hmm. most of my life, you know? Um and I didn't mean to. I thought I was supposed to. Right, you right. Know, I thought I was supposed to li- try and live to this standard. Right. Just like, I'm a child of the king. Right. right? So, yeah. like, shouldn't I have the best of the best of the best? Yeah. No conflict. And, and, you know, and those, again, those are lies. And I recently have been saying to people, like, why do you think that? Mm-hmm. Where did you read that in the Bible? Right. Like, Yes, greatly blessed, highly favored, prosperous, um, what's the other one? Abundant, life, yeah. right? All those words. Guess what, though? You have to define them by God's definition. Right. Not the world. Well, And that, yeah. that's a big part of it. 
apost the apost God must have hated the apostle Paul, right? right? No, yeah. right, but but like he not like he did not live the abundant, prosperous, right. <laughs> charmed life, right? I know. I know. Now look at all he went through. People didn't like him, and that's what that's what I say. I go to the disciples and I look. And I look at what Jesus told them, and he said, you will have trouble. Right. But take heart, I've overcome the world. That's right. not a moment thing. That's like eternity perspective, right? right? Like we, our hope is in the eternal. Yeah. Our, you know, the eternal God. That's where the hope is. So sure. Do we get blessings here in this time? Yes, we yeah, do. Absolutely. But it is not only. But and and that's again too uh, that thing with the words abundance, mm -hmm. abundance of what? Mm -hmm. I think when I say abundance, you hear money, mm -hmm. you know, right? Like and or P and not you, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The you yeah. out there, and it's like that. That doesn't match up. Mm -hmm. If you read the Bible, right. he can't be talking about money, right? You right. know, and he can't be talking about no conflict. Um, hello, he was argued with his whole ministry yeah that's plenty of conflict and yeah. all the disciples mm -hmm. died at the hands of others yeah. right i think yeah. maybe one didn't i don't know yeah. but like it was not easy peasy it was not cake mm -hmm. yeah. i mean i don't want to be in prison and right. uh and a, a see you know murdered a, yep yeah <laughs> i don't want to be in yeah i mean i might have to but and I think we can have parallels where we're like, oh, I'm in the storm right now, you know, and, and that's great. I love the parallels, but I don't really want to be in a shipwreck. You know? <laughs> right. I, I hope, I hope that's not on the agenda. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Anyway, so, um, it's like our almost final question. Um, how did God lead you to this grateful perspective on a, mm -hmm. You know, it's, I, as I do with my writing a lot, it's kind of something I stumbled upon because I was thinking like, what, what, what kind of message would I offer around aging? It was like, what's the real problem with our heart's attitude towards aging? And it's like, everyone I know just grumbles and complains about aging, right? Like, it's like, oh, I'm getting older. Ugh, I don't like, uh, 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 you know, and as I see it, I was like, well, what's, What's the antidote for grumbling and complaining? It's gratitude. Gratitude. Right? It's always <laughs> gratitude. Right? You just got to be thankful. And that changes your heart. So what would it look like to apply that to aging? To actually be thankful that you're aging. To actually be like, oh, wow, it's kind of a blessing that I get to live today. And I'm not promised tomorrow. So it'll be a blessing if I get to live tomorrow too. What would it look like to just age gratefully? Yes. Oh. That I love it. I love that so much. And I, like I, like I said, I'm so excited to keep continuing on um, because every day has just been, it, every day is hit, you know, mm -hmm. it's not like something I really like, ah. I'm like, oh, that's good. Oh, you know, it's, I, yeah. it's really helpful. Um, and I, I, in my review, you know, I was saying it's not, it's not a how to, it's mm -hmm. not a quick fix guide. It's nothing like that. It's just a matter of that perspective shift into mm. gratitude. And I know from experience, it really makes a massive difference mm. in your day yeah. to be like, you know what? Okay. I, I don't like this thing that happened in my body or whatever. I don't like this, but I have at least a thousand things I can thank <laughs> God for right, right now in this <laughs> very right. moment. And I'm going to do it and I'm going to, you know, rebuke the devil and I'm going to dance around and worship my God because he's worthy and because it lifts my spirits. I mean, it's like a double blessing, right? And uh, what you said about waking up today, like I had that amazingly today. Like yesterday I woke up and it was, it was a scary morning. We'll just say that. I'm going to be very vague. It was a very scary morning, but through that, I drew closer to God and I, he was with me. I mean, he was so present and he was speaking and I was listening and I was praising him and it was great. And it was, and I was like, that was a great day. Wow. It started 
really scary, but it was a great day because I was, I had the opportunity to just be with him. Okay. And then today I woke up to the birds <laughs> tweeting and I'm like, oh, those are new birds. I got to go check them out. Like, I don't recognize that. And as I was passing the living room, <gasps> this like marvelous light was just shining through <laughs> at 620 in the morning. Um, and we've had bad wind and rain for three days. And so I haven't seen the sun. So today's oh, what a great day. I love it. <laughs> I was yeah. like, oh, and I'm going into my girls and have you looked outside? It's amazing. I oh, love it. Love it. Um, yeah. And then I had so many new birdies, and I was just so grateful just for that. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> love it. So yeah, I I just love it. Um, last question for you, Heather. How can we support you? Yeah, well, I mean, I would love everyone to check out the book. And I mean, as you well know, oh leaving God. a review on Amazon is gold. So if you like it, leave a review or tell your friends about it. Yeah, that would be yes. wonderful. And you can listen to my podcast compared to who um, it's available everywhere podcasts are. And I did spend some time in April talking about aging. So there's a couple nice. like four or five episodes on aging if that's a topic that's close to anyone's heart. Perfect. That's wonderful. And um, yeah, I left my review yesterday. So. Oh, thanks, Vanessa. I appreciate that. So I know how those reviews are. Yes. <laughs> they really are gold. It's like, hey, if you love it, help me share it with others. <laughs> That's so. true. Well, thank you so much for your time. I thank thoroughly you. enjoyed this. And um, yeah, thank you so much. Oh, thank you.